On Larry King Now, funny man Bob Saget. I don't go as blue as people think, but I have in the past. I mean, you know, a 40-second bit on a hemorrhoid in Winnipeg is not blue. <laughs> it makes a man laugh. If you're doing it. prostate humor, I mean, who are you hurting? You're actually mm -hmm. creating a public service. I know you don't do a lot of politics. What do you make of Mr. Trump anyway? What would I make of him if I had my choice? I don't know. I think <laughs> a hand model. Um, I think he's got beautiful hands, and they could be replaced for anyone on television. Maybe a Zales commercial where we put a diamond on his... Good thinking. ...little orange fist. Don, I called him a month before he passed away, and I, I said, Don, is there anything I can do? And he yells into the phone, what do I have to do to get you out of my life? Yeah. <laughs> Plus, why are we obsessed with reboots? We go through all of these political shutdowns that get us so upset. You know, bombs are dropped, and then you watch in the next couple years what television shows result from that. So they take you back to a kinder, gentler time. We miss. And we miss it, but then Leave it to Beaver really wasn't about anything. It was just watching the kid talk. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Today's special guest, actor, comedian, author, and TV personality, Bob Saget. Bob shot to stardom as Danny Tanner on Full House, now rebooted as Netflix's Fuller House. He's also known for his hosting duties on America's Funniest Home Videos, his role on HBO's Entourage, and of course his popular stand-up comedy tours and specials, one of which garnered him a Grammy nomination in 2013. His current stand-up special is Zero to Sixty. It's available on multiple platforms, including Amazon, iTunes, and DirecTV. You shot it in Brooklyn. I did. I shot it at the Williamsburg Hall of Music. My hometown. Why Brooklyn? I love it there, because it's one of the biggest boroughs I could find. And uh, I met that, I asked for a donkey, but instead they got me a... There's a music uh, hall in Williamsburg? There is, and it's great. It's kind of a trendy hipster place. Everyone there looks like they're the guy that used to be on the Verizon commercial. Zero to 60 meaning? Meaning from the time I was born and uh, came out of the mom uh, to... Uh, I'm 61 now, but when I shot it, I was 60. And it deals with from the moment I learned the facts of life to the moment that uh, I became friends with Rodney Dangerfield and Richard Pryor and... A lot of stories of comic suffrage, a lot of jokes that I do in my soft R-rated way that you tend to appreciate and also have disdain, which is interesting about me. People love it or don't love it, but in any case, they reckon with it in some way. Is there some drama and comedy? There is. Uh, my mother passed away a couple years ago, and um, it was it was after I wrote the book that you so graciously helped me love that promote book. here. Thank you, and you told me that, and that meant a lot to me. Um, and then I just kind of changed the tone of what I was doing and talking about my mother's passing and how gracious she was in the way she left this earth. Um, there was a lot of comedy in it. She told me she was coming back as a dove. So there's, that's five to seven minutes of material. And um, it's, it's about in the, in the middle of the special. And then I close with uh, four original songs that um, I always have written comedy music. I just loved it since you I sing? saw I sing since I'm 11. Not well, but I keep doing it. And um, since I was influenced by Martin Mull when he used to go out with his furniture and I sing oh. his comedy songs. Where is he? He's uh, painting. He's painting and he yeah. does occasional acting jobs and he's just a brilliant, wonderful man. And um, so he influenced me a lot. And the song I do at the end of the special, I'm proud of. It's, it's kind of my We Are The World kind of my give piece a chance. It's called We've Gotta Be Kind to Each Other. And the audience really got into it, and it has its little PG-13 moments for... So it's playing on a lot of places. Right? It's gonna be everywhere. It's uh, it's on AT&T, Google Play, all, all cable all over the world, and it just dropped, as they say. I don't know why they call it dropped. It sounds like it <laughs> failed uh, It uh, yesterday. Uh, so it's... Uh, and it, it, there was a pre-sale on iTunes, and it's Amazon is a big, big thing that we're on Amazon. So. Is there a lot of your famous X-rated material in See, it? See, I never thought of it as X-rated. First thing, I'm fully clothed. They arrested Lenny Bruce for it. They Lenny did. Lenny my dear friend. You go way past Lenny. I, I, I don't think so. Yeah, you do. Well, not the new one. Oh, I haven't seen Well, that. I walked out on stage, and I before I did the show, right before I went out to go do it, 
and I found out I was doing it just four days before. I was on a plane, and the, the gentleman, Brian Volkweiss, of Comedy Dynamics is the company, uh, emailed me, and he did my last special, and I had a very good experience. He said, do you want to shoot your special in four days? And I said, well, I'm, I, I'm very prepared. I'm in three years. I've been wheeling this hour and a half of material. And I, I said, it's going to be cleaner. It's not going to be as blue. And then I hit the stage, and I was there with hipster kids, and... Oh, I can't believe what happened. It just, Why did you go blue? I don't really go blue. I do what I find funny. Like, we spoke for a moment before the show. Um, humor is, you don't have to be blue to be funny. My favorite comedians don't go blue. Don, Don Rickles. Rickles. Don never Rickles, curse. my never idol. Never curse. People think he cur he never curse. But he did say uh, GD, and he did use oh, he, the Lord's name in vain. Which, yes, he did. oddly enough, I don't ever tread on that territory. Cause, no, you don't. But I talk, and I don't go as blue as people think, but I have in the past. I mean, you know, a 40-second bit on a hemorrhoid in Winnipeg is not blue. <laughs> it makes a man laugh. If I you're doing it. prostate humor, I mean, who are you hurting? You're actually you, creating a public service. Are jokes about Harvey Weinstein today fair? If anything is funny, is it funny? Can you make it funny? There's the tragedy plus time. There is too soon. Um, I am not a political satirist. However, in my special, I do talk about Bill Cosby a little bit. Um, and I talk about my past a little bit. Um, I don't think anything that hurts people is something I want to bring up to people in the work I'm doing. And I, I'm in the process of finishing a movie I've directed that I, called Benjamin about a kid we think is on crystal meth. And we find out the people that do an intervention on him are possibly more screwed up than the kid that it's directed at. It's a dark comedy. But the things I'm trying to do right now, whether they be film or the, my new special that I'm excited about, um, they're trying to get people out of it. Uh, I, I'm trying to entertain people and bring them into... So, I, I want to entertain, is what So I you're want. saying with a, someone like Weinstein, it's too soon? Yeah, and I mean, and, and I knew him, and, and I know you knew him. I knew him very And, well. and uh, he was one of my managers. He and he Brad published Gray. my last two books. Um, he, he, I didn't know anything of this. I didn't know anything. Um, he never touched me. See, that's too soon. That's You'll, soon. You're laughing at it, but there are people that would consider that to be too soon, and I apologize. We have to apologize now. It's this new thing, which is good. There's a great thing about it, uh, which is putting a hall monitor on everything that's transpired of all of abuse towards women, whether it even be just joking around a water cooler, whether it be any kind of profiling, whether it be anything that separates the they against us. All or of that... Or as Trump it, called it, locker room humor. Uh, correct. And we all possess it. Guys are guys. Women possess it. Gals are gals. But when people are violated, there's just no humor. No there's no humor. And I've done... Humor over the years that I would love to set the Wayback Machine on and take out uh, things, you know, those things like when I was on Entourage, it was about me being twice the age of women that I would be dating. But they were women consenting in those parts. I know you don't do a lot of politics. What do you make of Mr. Trump anyway? What would I make of him if I had my choice? I don't know. I think <laughs> a hand model. Um... A hand, I think he's. I think he's got beautiful hands, and they could be replaced for anyone on television. Maybe a Zales commercial where we put a diamond on his. Good thinking. Little orange fist. Next, after the break, we'll talk with Bob Saget about the gift that keeps on giving. Full House. His new comedy special is zero to sixty. Stay with us on this edition of Larry King Now. It was Full House. Now it's Fuller House. One day it's going to be Fullest House. It's just going to be me in an urn on the window. <laughs> My last name's Saget, which rhymes with stuff, you know? I didn't grow up and say, hey, I'm gonna, that's gonna be my stage name. One of the good guys, Bob Saget, his special Zero to 60, available on multiple platforms. Amazon, iTunes, DirecTV. You can get it on your little whatever. If you have a little one. If you have a little one. Yeah. President, Don Rickles. President, come on. Don Rickles, a close yeah. friend of mine for f over 50 years. 
You said he was like a father to you. Yeah. How did this happen? Well, I had directed him in a movie called Dirty Work in 1998 with Norm MacDonald and Artie Lang, and he was just hilarious and ad-libbed this whole scene. I got in trouble because I let two cameras roll. I used the whole week's budget on Don Rickles <laughs> of letting film roll. And Frank Mancuso, who I know is an old friend, uh, ran MGM and was excited to have Don in the movie. And and uh, it was only you know a couple days with him. Um, we were friendly. Um, and then he just made fun of me on television, went on the Tonight Show and he said, was, Martin Scorsese, and now I'm with Bob Saget. Oh, I'm doing great. He was um, a special guy, though. So much love. He loved you. Oh, I loved him. Uh, what, how could we not? Um, no malice. And this is a lesson for everyone, that when you go and you roast, and we're in a roasting world right now. We're in a world right. where people are making fun of people, but there's no punchline. It's just attack. And it's Pitbull, and it's from doing the roasts that we see that are done sometimes well, like my friend Jeff Ross, he's got a good heart. He's the master. He's, he's wonderful at it, but he's got a loving place he's coming from. A lot of people do it maliciously. Don, I called him a month before he passed away, and I, I said, Don, is there anything I can do? And he yells into the phone, what do I have to do to get you out of my life? Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't want him to do this. this. Okay. He is. Okay. He is, he's, you miss him a lot, don't you? Oh, oh every day. Yeah. Tell me about Full House. How did you get that part of, of an everyday kind of father? Yeah. You were known as a blue comic. How did you get that? I was bluish. I, I would say I was. How a, did you get it? <laughs> bluish. I hate a lot of people. I, uh, I took a knee, but not in the, in the dirty sense. Um, I, uh, Jeff Franklin, as the exec producer of that show, wanted me originally for it. Uh, Bob Boyette and Tom Miller had seen me in this Richard Pryor movie called Critical Condition, where I played the earnest young Dr. Jaffe who did dirty things for, to, that Richard Pryor didn't want to do. But I was still very much the straight yeah. man. And the part was Richie Cunningham. They had done Happy Days, uh, Bob Boyette and Tom Miller. And um, so it was the straight guy on the show. Uh, there was another actor, a very talented, good guy. Um, and I, I always feel weird about it. But um, I was fired from a CBS show called The Morning Program against the Today Show and Good Morning America, and they asked me to take this part, and they reshot wow. half the pilot. And, um, and Did I you got, think it would be a hit? No, no, no. It didn't know what it was. At first, it was like Three Men and a Baby, which was had just come out a year before, and then it tried to be three guys like Bosom Buddies trying to meet women, not by dressing up as them, although I did that once on there. <laughs> and then that was eight years, and um, we could have continued another year on the CW or on the WB. I don't know what it was. It was two initials. And, uh, and we did not continue. Now, what about Fuller House? Fuller House became this thing that Stamos just wouldn't let go of, and Jeff Franklin either. Uh, who created the original, and Netflix, you know, uh, you, you, you got to hand it to Ted, and, and what they did, they believed that a family uh, opening platform was there, and they were right. And the three girls, Candace Cameron and uh, Jody Sweeten and Andrea Barber, took over the parts of Dave, John, and I. It was kind of this weird... You go on it. I go on it a few times. In December, the first nine came out. They did 18 this past year. So on Netflix, uh, in December, the, the, the back nine, which I would love to go play with you after we're done here, they uh, come out. That, see, that's why I do dirty humor, because that's my alternative. I <laughs> so know. It doesn't even elicit hardly any <laughs> response, Larry. I mean, you woke up for this. <laughs> and and um, How long can Fuller House go on? I, that's up to them. That's up to the, the lovely Netflix people. They're doing very well, apparently. Why are we obsessed with reboots? It's real simple. Uh, you think about uh, Happy Days and how that, that came out 20 years later. You know, we're talking about Cold War times and, and then 20 years, that, then that we go through all of these political shutdowns that get us so upset, you know, bombs are dropped and then you watch in the next couple of years what television shows result from that. So they take you back to a kinder, gentler time. We miss. And we miss it, but then Leave it to Beaver really wasn't about anything. It was just watching the kid talk. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Happy Days gave you that family and gave you that... That And Full House was that. And it's how do you survive with no mom and no dad? And we're talking about a lot of people that responded to the show because they would say to all of the cast members, I, I didn't have a, I was a single mom or my dad raised me, I my mom the, passed away. I went to the house in San Francisco, which was your opening. You never were in that house. No, 
One time on For Conan, I did a bit. <laughs> Pretended I never left it. After the break, a special game of If You Only Knew with Bob Saget, and you won't want to miss this. Don't go away. I'm not leaving. We're back with Bob Saget. Don't forget, zero to 60, it's on multiple platforms. Uh, tell me about Benjamin. Benjamin is something I'm incredibly When's proud of. When's it coming of. out? Um, it would probably be May, I think. I'm not sure. We're, we're right now, uh, we're, we're editing. My composer, Peter Melnick, is working you on it. You write it? I didn't. It was written by this really talented writer, Joshua Turek. Um, young guy. He's you not Benjamin? as young as he was. Are you Benjamin? I am not. I'm his father, Ed Thompson. Benjamin is my 15-year-old boy, played by Max Burkholder, who was on Parenthood. Very talented actor. And, um, is it a comedy? It is a dark comedy. So it's got uh, really good comedy people. Rob Corddry is the gynecologist who leads the intervention. Mary Lynn Ricecuff, a uh, very funny actress, uh, plays my girlfriend who puts a post on Facebook to call the intervention. And that's not where you call an intervention from. Um, Perry Gilpin is my estranged so wife. So the people who do the intervention are worse off than... They're Kevin worse off. It's Kevin Pollack, who I know you like. I love him. And uh, Sherry O'Terry and Dave Foley. It's a, it's a wonderful ensemble. Benjamin. Benjamin. Look forward and, in May. And I'm, I'm looking forward to you seeing it. We will come back. I'll come back every day. I'll be at your house when you get there. We play a little game of If You Only Knew. Okay. What was your strangest fan encounter? Oh, uh, that was, uh, I was somewhere I won't say. A guy is in front of the hotel after my show holding my 8x10 and said, come on, we're going up to your room. Really? Really. So we went up to my room. No, 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 so I got a patty melt. No, I called security. I switched hotels because he was camping out and was not going to leave, and it was, it was kind of scary. Weird. Best piece he lives of, with me now. <laughs> best piece of advice you ever got? Uh, Rodney. Rodney. Yeah, what did he have to do with your career? Rodney, I was uh, 24. I met him at the Comedy Store in La Jolla. He said, I love you, man. You got a Jewish head. You're screwed up. You're always going to be messed up in the head. You can't stop thinking. You're funny. You're always going to be funny, but you're never going to sleep. He was very funny. Very funny. And he knew it. He would, In the middle of his set, he would say to the audience in Vegas, I'm funny, all right? <laughs> I left out the uh, expletive. But he... Um, he told me, and he gave this advice to a lot of young comedians, because as you know, he I was on the first Young Comedian special, and Sam Kennison was on it, Rita Rudner, a lot of people, Yaakov, and, uh, and Sam Kennison exploded off of that show, and um, and I and I did okay. <laughs> Not so good. No, and But he always said, like a tank, man, just go like a tank, no matter what. Nobody wants you to make it. Nobody's going to help you, because he changed his name three times. You know, uh, this is a guy who... I knew him as Jackie Ray. At that, uh, J at Jackie Roy or Jackie? Jackie? Jackie Roy at the Diplomat Hotel, he opened for Peggy Lee. Yep. And he was Jacob Cohen before that. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Person you'd love to take to lunch? You. Something you can't Wait, about the, what about the answer? Is that okay? Can we, yeah, it's okay. Maybe dinner. Maybe, I think dinner. Okay. Something you can't live without? You. Guilty pleasure. I'm going to try not to say you. Uh, guilty pleasure would be... Um, I guess a, 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 a steak, that I would say. You love steak. I do, but I'm trying to eat less so I, I keep, the, keep the whole pipeline. Who's your dream co-star? Well, if I don't say John Stamos, he's going to cry. <laughs> um, so, Role you regret turning down? Um, oh, darn. That's a tough one. Um, I regretted turning down something. I can't remember what it was. I can't remember. Could have been that big a hit. No, it was something really good. Person you'd like to switch places with for a day. Oh, um, <laughs> this is meant with no maliciousness. Caitlyn Jenner. Um, just because I think I've got the same frame and I could, <laughs> and the clothes would be so easy to fit. No, change places with for a day. Um, I'd like to be Chauncey Gardner for a day. I'd like to be president oh. for a day. Just to see, I know nothing. I'm Schultz from Hogan's Heroes. That's a reference millennials will not know. But I would love to just, because we're at a place now where it's an open forum, uh, possibly. I'd love to just see what it's like. And, and it would be probably like being in a diving suit, a diving bell. <laughs> but, but just to see if there's anything uh, heartfelt that I could do to, to help someone. Mm. To help somebody. Where'd we find you on a day off? Um, 
Well, I'm actually probably with my wonderful girlfriend. Kelly, uh, I met her. She's gorgeous. Thank you. That's that's why. I, that's not why I like her. Actually, she's uh, she's a wonderful person. But person. The good looks don't hurt. But but hanging out or, or with my kids. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna go see my daughter later today, and I love my children very much. So person you'd least like to be stranded on a desert island with. Uh, John Stamos, because I wouldn't be able to fight him off. Bob Saget in 10 years. Uh, looking much younger, uh, more fit. Uh, uh, Kelly would be a much happier woman because of all that. And you're doing 14 years of Fuller House. Uh, the, it, my joke is it'll be Fullest House. It'll just be me <laughs> in an urn by the window. I would actually... Thanks, guys. That's right from the special. But I would, I would say my, my, that my three daughters are um, happy Happy. and healthy, and I I should have made that a priority uh, right away, because that is in the forefront. Who are your comedic favorites? There's so many. Um, I mean, I love, you know, Louis C.K., Bill Burr, Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock. Um, Jerry Seinfeld, if you haven't seen, have you seen him lately? He's like better than ever. He's the great stand. He is the greatest, he's one of the greatest on this earth. Um, and, And, there's a lot. There's a lot of people that I really mm-hmm. admire and look up to. Um, with Don gone, there's no one that does that, fits that mold, so we need new people. But um, we need people that are funny and thoughtful. I love all the political satirists. I'm in love with John Oliver. I'm doing my scleroderma benefit, which you've been gracious enough to always be conscious of and supportive. John Oliver's fantastic. John Oliver's fantastic. He's doing my benefit December 5th in New York. And I also have... Um, George Lopez is out there uh, doing it, and Jeff Ross, and um, and Michael Che from Saturn. I love what Bill Maher does. I love what uh, uh, Stephen Colbert does. I love the political satirists that are helping me get my news, because that's almost the only... get it. That's, I need to get it that way, because it's too painful the other way. In our final moments, Bob will answer your fan questions from social media. His comedy special is Zero to 60. We'll be right back. With Bob Saget, zero to 60, available on multiple platforms. Got a movie coming, Benjamin, and he's one of the good people. Some fan questions for you. Michelle Rangel on Facebook. Bob, how do you stay looking so young? Well, that's subjective. I mean, I don't know how I look today. What do you do? I don't do enough, but when I'm in good working order, I do my cardio. Uh, I do stay busy. I'm a, quite a workaholic, so I think that does do That's a lot. Good. During the movie, you watch me lose 10 pounds and put it back on. It's really exciting. Really? Yeah. Danny Barbado on the Larry King Now blog. Where do you rank Danny Tanner among the all-time great TV characters? I, I, reckon, I, I, I put him in there as one of the better television dads. It's a two-dimensional character, so we're talking about a guy that says, now, honey, you shouldn't have a beer at the prom, mm-hmm. but... There's something about... What made him special? He loved his kids. And the thing that started the show, two of the things I wanted, well, three, were that he he loves his kids more than anything. He loves hugging, so these are external qualities. And that he's a clean freak, which is just ripping from Neil Simon, uh, Mm. uh, Felix Unger. But I think the thing that set him apart was his deep, deep love for his kids and open communication. And that is what I think people loved about the character. And people, when I did the show, didn't love the character. I got a lot of flack for it. Really? They saw him as geeky, um, and they saw him as just the nerd burglar, and Stamos was Fonzie, and I was Richie Cunningham, except Ron Howard never came off as geeky. He came off as Ernest. Yeah. Donna also asks, is there another sitcom you wish you could have starred in? Uh, my Mother the Car. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. It was funny. <laughs> Nobody knows what it is, but Dick Van Dyke's wonderful brother, Jerry Van Dyke, was talking to a car. Who was the car? Anne Francis? It was his mother? I think it was Anne Francis. I think it was Anne Francis. But they should bring that back. I, I want to be in it. I want to talk to my mother as a car. DD223 on Twitter. Any, oh, I know. I know her. No, I know. Any chance we could see you do a Dirty Work sequel? People have talked about that. Um, Norm MacDonald, uh, we had lunch. Funny guy. Very funny. One of the funniest people alive. Um, and we're close. Uh, and he said the name of the movie should be Dirty Work 2, Keep Artie Alive. Because <laughs> Artie Lang, a dear friend, also has uh, self-proclaimed many issues. And uh, we want him alive. And I came up with a premise for it. I have the premise. But it's, I don't know, it's, uh, I don't see anyone jumping at it. And I'm, and 
I don't he, know. He wrote a very funny book, Norm Macdonald. Oh, uh, Norm, Norm did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was very, it was he very didn't know opposite. What was Jay. true and what was not. No, and he talked about Don in it. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, not what he meant at all about Don, because he revered Don. Yeah. But we, uh, Norm's thing is our, what we always shared was our, our, our reverence for Johnny Carson. And it was, oh, no, no matter what conversation, when, no, look at in Karnak impressions, and that's all, that's my whole Johnny Carson. Jackie Burgess III on Facebook. How do you react when you hear backlash to your blue comedy? I don't really hear it anymore. I did when I did one called That Ain't Right on HBO. And one guy, I was at a uh, benefit for my, for Slaughter Research Foundation, and the guy, I was about to take the stage, and the guy said, why did you do this? And I said, because I find it funny. Uh, so I do what I do. I march to my voice. And I don't think, uh, it's kind of equal now, the, the, the notoriety between being America's dad. And they've kind of retrofitted the Danny Tanner character into the new series to be not my stand-up, but more of what the man would grow into t t uh, 30 years later. Wonderful having you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Big thanks to my guest, Bob Saget. Be sure to watch his comedy special, Zero to 60, now available on multiple platforms, including Amazon, iTunes, and DirecTV. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at Kings Things. I'll see you next time.